has finally arrived. No, not the RTX 3090 Ti. Today, we are interested in this. The world's most expensive gaming motherboard that costs more than an RTX 3090. Is this the most ridiculous PC component ever released? Or actually, at yeah, MSI, onto something here. We don't do reviews on the channel, but I thought taking a look at this in more detail just had to be done. This is a motherboard with a touchscreen. It's a motherboard with dual PCI 5 slots. It's a motherboard like nothing else I have ever seen. It's basically not even a motherboard. Let's do this. eBuyer is your one-stop shop for great deals on technology and gaming hardware here in the UK. If you're looking to build a new PC this year or just supercharge your setup with a new monitor or some peripherals, head over to ebuyer.com and check out their wide range of great deals. What's more, they've also got some great deals on pre-built PCs from AlphaSync or some systems that are ready to ship. Check them out at the link in the description below. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't really know that this was actually coming until it arrived. I'd said to MSI ages ago that I thought their godlike motherboard was pretty cool, but I didn't envisage this. Now, for comparison's sake, this is an MSI Z690 Godlike, and this is an MSI Z690 Unify, one of their other high-end Z690 boards. Now, you're probably noticing a bit of a pattern. This is quite significantly larger than that. And to be honest with you, for $2,000, it probably should be. But when this arrived, I thought, there's no way on planet Earth that a motherboard that cost $2,000 should ever be bought by literally anybody. I couldn't think of a single person who should actually buy a motherboard like this. But the more I've read up on it and the more research I've done, my mind has kind of been changed. So hear me out. Now, this, I believe, is one of MSI's special sort of like press kits. I don't know if you can buy this one. It comes with some DDR5 memory. Nice touch, although it's not RGB or anything like that. It also comes with, according to this, an MSI 360mm cooler and, of course, the godlike motherboard itself. Now, I think that it opens, kind of opens up, maybe? 12 seconds later. In here, we've got radiator fans. In here, we've got the brackets and screws for the cooler, apparently. And in, ah, right. And also down here is the water block, but we can't exactly take that out right now. If I pull the motherboard out, this is sort of on this massive foam plinth. We're gonna look at the motherboard first of all. And then under here, there is actually a radiator behind this white cardboard as part of MSI's three 360 mil CPU cooler. They've also given us one of these, which is like a DIY test bench. We're going to give that a go in a moment. And of course, the motherboard itself. Let me move this presentation box out of the way and take a look at our $1,500 motherboard first of all. Here we go. Whoa. First thing that strikes me, this is one heavy motherboard. By the looks of it, we've already got a bit of a peel as well. Um, I'm not sure I'm supposed to peel that off. I don't think, I think, I think I might have broken the motherboard already. Although that is very weak. So let's just pop that back on and pretend that nobody ever noticed. Oh God. This is one interestingly designed motherboard. And I'm not being funny. It should be considering it adorns the title godlike. Now a standard ATX motherboard comes out to about here. So this motherboard is safe to say gained some weight and added an extra couple of inches, something we could all probably do without. And that of course makes way for this. And it's one of the first core features I should really point out. Now a According to MSI, this is the first ever touchscreen to come included on a motherboard. Now, you're probably thinking the same as me. James, that is so useless, I might as well drink a hot beverage out of a chocolate teacup and watch it literally melt inside of my hand. When your side panel's on on your computer, how are you supposed to touch the screen? MSI even say you can tune, I'm guessing they mean overclock your system with this screen. Although, I'm under good authority that the screen is actually, oh, that was uh, very easy, removable. Now, when you remove it, it doesn't look very good the motherboard anymore but this i believe is something we can actually plug into a usb port on the rear of the motherboard pop on the desk and use as like a bit of a control panel if we want and then if we want to see system stats and temps we just pop it straight back in the motherboard now of course one of the main serious features about this motherboard is its overclocking ability with a 22 phase power delivery and titanium capacitors this thing is able to deliver a serious amount of power to even the highest end i9 12900k and 12900k CPUs. But even still, for me, how could that possibly be worth $1,500 or maybe even more? Is this just a board that MSI have created to exploit those with more money than cents and make a few quid? Hello! 
I like money. Originally, my thought process was yes, but actually, now that I think about it, maybe the answer's no. Now, let's think about this. If this was a Threadripper motherboard designed for some of AMD's like 32 and 64 core CPUs, I wouldn't have a problem with a motherboard this price. It would make sense for professional outfits who needed really high bandwidth USB, needed loads of connectivity, needed certified 24 7 operation, and were using the board in a professional workspace capacity. But with Intel's 12900KS being so powerful, and then their Threadripper range alternatives not really existing anymore in terms of any modern high-end desktop i7 or i9 chips, this potentially does have a spot in the market. Now, it has even more of a spot in the market than it ever usually would because of emerging technologies such as PCI Generation 5, so this motherboard supports more than any other design on the market in both SSD and GPU formats. Now, if we take a look at the rear panel, this board is so heavy. The solid metal on the back that shrouds the whole thing weighs a ton. This must be 10 times heavier. Listen to that when I bang it on the table. 10 times heavier than any motherboard that I've ever seen in my entire life. Take a look at the rear I.O. here, you might notice something. There's not a single standard USB-A port with normal bandwidth. Every single connection has 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits, 10 gig you get the drift, 10 gigabits, USB-C down here that's actually Thunderbolt, and 40 gigabits per port. You heard me right, 40 gigabits of bandwidth here, as well as, of course, our pretty expected optical and analog audio outputs and Wi-Fi 6E. One thing you also get on this board that's going to be definitely amazing for workstation use is 10 gig ethernet. The board of course also supports DDR5 memory up to 66, 66 megahertz, so 6.6 .6 and a bit gigahertz. So for the very highest standard there. In terms of your PCI lanes, you've got two lanes that are PCI Gen 5 and one that's Gen 4. You've then got a myriad of Gen 4 NVMe connections for the latest super fast storage and one that supports PCI Generation 5 SSDs. Those drives currently don't even exist, much like PCI Gen 5 graphics cards don't, though expect that to change with NVIDIA's next-gen launch, which I'd expect to be fairly imminent at this point. Now think about it. PCI Gen 4 for SSDs gives around 7 gigabytes a second of bandwidth. PCI Gen 5 will be double, so we're talking, what, 14, 15 gigabytes plus, which makes a lot of sense. When you then take into account the fact that 10 gigabit Ethernet is only 1 gigabyte a second, give or take, you're able to achieve 15 times the storage throughput in terms of data locally on the board than you are with network-attached storage, making, once again, real, real professional use cases where you're munching through a huge amount of onboard storage actually really viable on this board. And I don't doubt that we'll see PCI Generation 5 to SSD converter plates also hit in the market. If that isn't enough, I'd also expect, of course, this board to be pretty good for those needing to run multiple of the next-gen PCI 5 graphics cards. Obviously, SLI and Crossfire died years ago at this point, and who needs to run two RTX 4090 TIs or 4050 TIs or whatever NVIDIA call it? It's only ever going to be in professional workloads, which does make some of this board's gaming branding admittedly just a little bit weird. As you would expect, other fairly basic features for high-end motherboards, like a built-in debug display LED, loads and loads of RGB, are all also, of course, catered for, as well as physical power and reset buttons that allow you to much easier boot your system up in a time of desperate need. The high-end connectivity, though, doesn't stop on the rear panel. Take a look at how loaded, like literally loaded, the side of this motherboard is. Let's work from top to bottom, shall we, and see what we've got going on. Starting at the very top, you've got your RGB, a number of fan headers, and your standard motherboard 24-pin power. You've then got dual USB 3.1 20 gigabit per second port, not 10 gigabits per second, 20 gigabits per second on each individual USB-C front panel cable, two USB 3 connections, two, four, six SATA connections, SATA 3, allowing for basically 600 megs of data transfer, read and write, while heading down the bottom gives you your usual front panel connection, connections, your RGB, temperature probes, USB 2. You've then got loads and loads of switches to use different BIOS and motherboards modes for extreme overclocking, making this thing really an all singing, all dancing design for those who literally cannot do without the very best. And as if that wasn't enough features for you, you also get this, which I think allows you to build the motherboard outside of a case first. So let's give this a go. This is secretly the bit I've been most excited for all video. <sighs> Yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't sound good. I've got to admit, that's a little bit um, unorthodox, and it doesn't feel awfully unstable, but definitely quite cool. Now, where am I going with all of this? Eh. To be honest with you, I'm not really too sure. I just always knew that when really high-end hardware came out like this, that frankly, 99.9% .9 of people have got no reason to buy whatsoever. It's great to take a look and see what it can actually do. The included screen debug touchscreen is pretty cool, most definitely a gimmick, but I guess MSI had to find some way of filling the space on the motherboard. And at least, let's be honest, they added a speaker onto the rear, because otherwise, I mean, would have been completely redundant, right? I do think, though, this gives us a really exciting insight into the future tech we're likely to see on motherboards. Within three, five years, probably even less nowadays with the rate that technology moves, widespread PCIe 5.0 support will be commonplace on motherboards. Think about it, in X370, no one knew what PCIe Gen 4 was, and by this time last year, basically everything had PCIe Gen 4 all over it. The new Intel boards, some of them even on the B660 chipset, are fully PCIe Gen 4, and it's not too long before PCIe 5.0 joins in and follows the party. One thing that is going to be really interesting with new GPUs and new tech as it lands is that the actual capability of the tech is probably going to be there. Gen 5 SSD speeds are already pretty much existing. It's actually the interface, the PCIe Gen 4, Gen 5, the mechanism hardware uses to communicate with each other that's frankly not really keeping quite pace with the hardware we've got coming. Something we've seen the opposite with on DDR5, whereby the DDR5 interface is ready, but the memory, frankly, as of yet, isn't quite there. If you'd like to learn more about this utterly ridiculous motherboard, check out the links in the description below. Hope you found this video just a little bit of fun, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.